As you all may or may not know, I was not a fan of Brie Larson, especially when things became really controversial a few years ago. And I remember reporting about the empty seats in the theaters because that actually happened at my theater. Um, or it was just me and somebody else. And the reports of empty seats from plenty of others, as well as the whole Disney buying seats to boost the sales of Captain Marvel shenanigans. And we also found out that uh, some critics are actually shills who get paid and get benefits from the studios if they leave a good review. So that wasn't surprising when it was revealed and a lot of people were shocked, but you know, as an actor in the entertainment industry, there are things that happen in Hollywood that no one would believe until it actually gets leaked out there. And you also have to be uh, very careful because you can get blacklisted if you speak against a studio or reveal things that you really shouldn't, which is why I have to be careful sometimes with the inside information that I you know, report on Spider-Man films, which I've been doing pretty much for like more than a decade now. Anyway, back on point, I am one of those who believe that the only reason why Captain Marvel broke the $1 billion mark is because it was a film that came after Avengers Infinity War that led into Avengers Endgame, which didn't exactly tie into the next film. It was pretty much its own film, but you know, people were just so desperate to find out anything, especially since at that point, Marvel was creating top tier films and I miss how that used to be. And now lately, it's just a bunch of crap. And that's all thanks to Bob Chapek. But I'm not going to get into that right now. I've already posted about what I stated about Bob Chapek and the whole situation. How Kevin Feige lost his full creative control and how Bob Iger uh, stepped in now and everything's going to be back to normal now, thankfully. And I actually fell asleep during Captain Marvel. And I never do that during a film. You know, that was pretty much the first time. And uh, I thought it was just a really bad film. And it's a film that I'll never rewatch ever again. So when I found out a sequel was coming out, I was not looking forward to it at all. And I know a lot of the uh, other people were not looking forward to it at all either. And um, I remember that when Avengers, uh, you know, the video game came out, I really started to like the character of Miss Marvel. Um, I really, I mean, I've heard of her, but I didn't know anything about the character until I, you know, played a video game and. Um, you know, when I started watching the uh, Disney Plus show that came out, which actually happened to be one of my favorite, uh, you know, Marvel TV shows. And I especially love the uh, family dynamic. I thought it was pretty hilarious. And look, I despise WandaVision. I don't know how people can like that show. I mean, it was very boring to me. The whole Ralph Boner um, Quicksilver twist was just really a punch to the nuts because everybody was looking forward to that and very excited about it. And but I look, I loved Monica Rambeau. So when I found out the sequel will pretty much be like Spider Man No Way Home in a sense to where you're gonna have all three of them together, I was on board of it. You know, not so much about Brie Larson's Captain Marvel. Um, yeah, just everything that happened in the past. And like I said, I'm letting that go. It happened so many years ago, I'm over it. And uh, I was a little worried, you know, when a critics review started to come out. And I remember the same thing happened with Five Nights at Freddy's. And I was worried because, you know, I love the game and everything. And, you know, I know that Willy's Wonderland came out a few years ago and it's kind of like a ripoff or a parody of Five Nights at Freddy's. But, you know, the audience score was really high and I actually loved the film. And it ended up backing at the box office. So case in point, you really just can't trust the critics anymore. The thing is that most of them aren't comic fans anyway, and they're just looking to judge a film based on other aspects that the general audience just really just wouldn't care about. And I mean, look, why we go to the movies? We go because we want to escape from our everyday lives. And the one thing that people are starting to get pissed off about is that when they're shoving that political narratives down our throats and changing things drastically because, you know, they want to pander certain people instead of focusing on giving us a good film. And, you know, that's pretty much entertaining. And that's pretty much as to what's been going on, uh, starting with She-Hulk. Yeah, that. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't even get me started. So I decided to check out the film for myself uh, with very low expectations, but shockingly, and I know that some people hate this film. I've already seen some YouTube reviews on the way, you know, home. Um, and you know, I was <laughs> very shocked, you know, by uh, what people were saying and everything. And I'm just like, did we watch the same movie? I, th I thought it was, you know, look, it's not perfect or anywhere near as good as Spider-Man No Way Home obviously but i can't wait to rewatch it again tomorrow in 40x and 3d 
And I don't want to get into any spoilers. However, it does confirm something that I've reported on years ago about a certain young team that's coming. And, you know, I'm not going to spoil it. And at the end, you know, the mid credit scene was actually really good. <laughs> the CGI from that character was so atrocious. I'm like, I would rather have the practical effects on that character because it was just horrible. I mean, I'm like, they really have to do something about the look because it was just really, really bad. You know? Yeah, it's like one of those, like, you ever seen those direct-to-video DVDs or Blu-rays or whatever where, you know, it's just really bad, horrible CGI effects? Well, there you have it. That's just how bad it was. I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe they actually didn't fix this. Yeah, like, it's like the Flash horrible CGI. Probably even worse than that. And, uh, look, the only downside to this film was that I would say was the musical scene, which was very cringe. Um... A lot of people were laughing in the theater, but um, I was just shocked to see Brie Larson singing, dancing, and smiling because she was like a freaking robot with no emotions in the first film. And our acting did improve in this film, Miss Marvel and her family, along with the baby Flurkins, which are so damn adorable, stole, stole the damn show. And um, what I did find to be weak was the villain who was played by Tom Hiddleston's wife. And uh, look, if you want a real menacing female villain, Hella from Thor Ragnarok definitely pulled it off. She scared the piss out of me. And that's just how a villain's supposed to be. You know, they're supposed to scare you, you know. And uh, look, there's no end credit scene. And as I mentioned before, there is a med credit scene. And look, my take on this is go watch the film. Judge it for yourself. And, you know, just because I found it to be entertaining does not mean that you will. I mean... I already see some people stating that it was just a very boring film and they hated it. And they complained about every single thing that they could. But honestly, to me, what's boring right now is Loki season two. I don't know where they're going with this, but nothing really is going on. Um, I mean, yeah, there are things that are going on there. You know, that one scene of Miss Minutes, like going on full Anakin Skywalker and like crushing those people. Yeah, that was really interesting, but nothing is really going on. You know compared to how the first season turned out and uh, i haven't watched the final episode of loki yet for season two and hopefully something interesting happens but yeah you could still feel it with bob chapek he totally screwed the pooch on this one and i felt bad for kevin feige because i mean like i've been stating on my page um he lost his full creative control and you know usually he would just directly go to bob Iger in the past you know you'd have to go through I guess some of the people he had to go through were like bankers and stuff that just don't it's like going to a football fan who has no idea about what's going on with comic books or what they're about or superheroes and saying hey how would you like this idea or that idea and they just go okay that sounds cool you know i don't know nothing about it so do whatever you want you know and uh that's pretty much as to what happened and you know sometimes it'd be like oh i like that idea i think this idea is better or whatever and kevin foggy just lost full creative control it was during the pandemic where he was just you know bob chapek was like yo now's the time to like double it up and just make twice as much content on disney plus and the whole situation with scarlett johansson where they released her film on disney plus instead of in theaters which is a violation of a contract um and like i said bob chapek really screwed everything up um, to have to go through people who are morons, who have who have no idea as to how or what fans want in particular, and just okaying stupid ideas like everything that came from the She-Hulk. Okay, they greenlit that. These writers and idiots who were just like, oh, wouldn't it be fun to just make a show making fun of the fans? Uh, yeah, that's just universally like I'm not gonna try not to curse here because I don't want to get in trouble, but that's just universally freaking stupid. Like, why would you make a show attacking your own fan base? Like, that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, I mean, yeah, I know that the boys kind of does that, but they do it in a way to where not, they're not really, like, trying to insult you, you know what I'm saying? But they do it in a fun way to where people actually think, oh, yeah, that's funny, kind of like South Park. But um, the way that She-Hulk does it was just an abomination. That show was an abomination. That everything about it was just garbage. And the writers actually admitted that, you know, the whole point was to insult the fan base you know and yeah i'm already hearing you know crazy things from other like you know critics and stuff talking about how like you know the reason why the marvels if it's gonna fail is because of the men listen look i'm a dude i'm a man obviously i enjoyed the film 
And I don't care, like, you know, whether it's a female led film or a male led film, like if a movie's garbage, I'm going to tell it like it is. I ain't going to sugarcoat it because it's what you want to hear. That's the way I've always been. I found this film to be entertaining. Um, yeah, some female led films are just garbage and you could so tell because they bombed at the box office. I'm not sure as to what's going to happen with this film, at the box office, but I did find it entertaining, you know, and, um, Look, if you watch the film, let me know in the comment section as to what you thought of it. Just please, for the love of Uncle Ben's rice, don't spoil anything for anybody because people seem to be doing that anyway. You know, you tell them not to do something, they're going to do it anyway. It's like children. So until next time, this is your friendly neighbor at Spider Man. Webbing out. Thanks, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot.